Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Today, our guest is the founder and producer of Vegan District at the Pike. Please join me in welcoming Kawani Brown. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you so much now, for I just used me. that one thing, but it sounds like you're producing all things vegan. <laughs> so we're we're going to cover a whole spectrum of things here. Okay. Uh, but uh, as I was trying to do my research um, and learning more about just the subject, mm -hmm. uh, I read about the fact that Donald Watson kind of coined the phrase way back in 1944. Mm -hmm. But then it's only been more recent, at least in my um, awareness, that I see all things vegan. I'm seeing restaurants pop up. I was even introduced to vegan by a friend about a year ago, and I thought, mm -hmm. wow, this is pretty tasty. Oh, great. Yeah, absolutely. So what is vegan? For those who are just trying to understand it, maybe mm -hmm. new, what is it? How would you what describe? Yes. Okay, so vegan is not consuming any animal product at all. At all. So at all. So that could be, you know, meat, mm -hmm. um, any meat from an animal. That could be dairy products, so milk, any milk from any animals, cows, goats, and then also no honey uh, from bees. So you want to hmm. stay away from pretty much all animal product and byproduct. So if something, a food item, uh, lots of our food items today, they'll have like a byproduct in there, they'll have a milk protein or something like that in there. Mm -hmm. If that's in there, that's not vegan as well. So anything that, you know, uses an animal or something from an animal is not vegan. Now, why is that bad or good? Mm -hmm, I mean, what, mm -hmm. what is the point? If, if, I'm, if I'm sort of trying to think this through, yes, why should I be concerned about Okay. Yeah, especially we, honey. I didn't realize honey was a part mm -hmm. of that. A lot of people, the honey one, yeah. they don't know. Sometimes like the eggs or the milk, they won't right. know that one. Right, Vegetarian right. Po people are more familiar with vegetarians yeah. Yeah, yeah. who do consume dairy, do consume eggs. Right. Um, some, you know, even consume honey. But we want to stay, as vegans, the whole point of the thing is staying away from harming animals. Uh -huh. So when you're staying away from harming animals and imposing your will upon them, you're not taking from them. You're not killing them. You're not hurting them. You're also not using something they might make, like honey. Okay. They make that for themselves. That's where and so in. by us using it, we're taking from them. Same with eggs. Mm -hmm. they're, they, they're making that as a bodily process. And so if we take that, then that's not vegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when you uh, think about that mm -hmm. as being, uh, how would you describe it? Is it is it a uh, a lifestyle? Is it a, a, a consciousness? How would you describe someone who is, is on that path of being vegan? Yeah. For sure, it is both of those. It's okay. a lifestyle. It's a consciousness. It's an awakening. Uh, okay. For many years, for seventeen years, I was vegetarian, and so uh, I felt like that was my kind of journey into gotcha. veganism. Right, right. Um, there were times where I was vegan off and on, mm -hmm. but there was no commitment to it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when my daughter was born, I made the commitment to veganism. But uh -huh. it is an awakening, uh, an awakening in seeing uh, the bigger picture, seeing other living things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, human, man or not, mm -hmm. as being able to live their own lives and do their mm -hmm. own good. There's other things as well that go into that um, mm -hmm. for the environment. Some people are vegan for the environment. Mm -hmm. um, some people are vegan for their health. Mm -hmm. And some people are vegan for the animals. Some are vegan for all of those things. I personally and my family are vegan for all of those things. It starts with the animals. Mm -hmm. And then for me, the health and the environment are like side effects of being vegan. You know, gotcha. you're vegan for the animals and then those great things come along with it. Gotcha. Now, Self-confessing, mm -hmm. I was just recently uh, visiting my home in yes. Mobile, Alabama. Yes. And the highlight of my trip was <laughs> the grill was filled with yes. baby back ribs and everything right, else. Right, so right. when you're talking to people who aren't vegan, mm -hmm. how, how does that? How does that? I mean, should I have a guilt trip that I'm taking the honey from the bee, or a uh, lot. how does that conversation go? Right, right. And I try and tell them what's great about vegan. They usually see it as oh, you're vegan, how sad, or you can't <laughs> yeah. have this or that. You know, if you're yeah. new to it, you just think a vegan may eat grass and, you know. Yeah. You mean uh, you don't? No, I do eat grass <laughs> okay, and I love yeah. it. It's very good. <laughs> but, 
okay. I also eat because it's great for you, right? <laughs> but I also eat other things as well. Right. And so for someone like you who went on that trip and you were like, I was looking forward to that barbecue, right, right. vegans do eat barbecue. And we, you know, there's different ways of making it. A lot of the foods we're used to and what I found, because uh -huh. I come from a family that loved like soul food. My mom was always in the kitchen, yeah. you know, cake. Yeah, I want to meet your mom. South, right? <laughs> she is from um, the South and, all, you know, right. cornbread, all those things. Yeah. And I, so when I went vegan, I started missing it, but I realized all the flavors she was using mm -hmm. were vegan. And I could use those flavors again, uh -huh. the spices she used. So you just um, use the spices on different yes, substances. Yes, and I use and it, yeah. and I okay. treat it whatever I was making as she was be treating the meat. Right. So if it was something like a barbecue I was missing, right. we have, you know, seitan, we have different vegetables. We can get, I can still make her barbecue sauce uh -huh. and put that barbecue sauce on it and go through. Sometimes we're missing that feeling too uh -huh. of being home and the barbecue right. and the outside. Right. You can still do all that, right. but just, you know, incorporate those flavors and those memories yeah. and leave, just leave the animal product out of it. Right. Now, I happen to be listening to the radio in the car in recent months, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think, and you may know more about this, I, I heard a conversation relevant to trying to make vegan as an option in the schools mm -hmm, on the mm -hmm. lunch menu. Mm -hmm. And someone said, oh, well, just give more lettuce and more salad options. <laughs> and, and I guess whoever was trying to promote this was like, it's, it's more to it than just right. saying that. You need something that's going to be appealing. Uh -huh. So do you know much about that? And if not, what would you say to that, making vegan options in schools? Yes, and now I do believe in LAUSD, there is at least one vegan option a day, which okay. is wonderful and great. Okay. And, you know, they fought for that for a very long time. Uh -huh. um, I was uh, grateful to be able to go to the board for one of those fights, one of those conversations, okay. and talk about why we needed it in schools. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is saying, you know, well, there's apples, there's lettuce already there. You don't right. need to make more options. Right. Well, we're talking about children, and how appealing is that for them to sit and have an apple and lettuce yeah. and everyone else has so many varieties. Yeah. So that's not going to make them want to reach for those things more. Right. And it's not just for the vegan children, mm -hmm. it's also for everyone. Everyone's going to get more plant-based options. Yeah. Um, and you always want it to be appealing. I mean, food is fun. Yeah, it and is. if you take that fun out of it, I have two young children, um, an almost nine-year-old and almost six-year-old, and yeah. if you take that fun out of it, it's not yes, going to, you're not going to have the longevity. Right. And I want it to be able to be sustainable for them. Right. So we, you know, we make it fun. We eat cakes, we eat pizza, just plant-based ones. So offering no. someone lettuce is not, no, you know, it's not going yeah. to. Boring. Right, right. It's not that it's not healthy. <laughs> yes, yeah, you yeah. want that too, but right. as a part of it. Right. So you mentioned that you were a vegetarian and mm -hmm. then the, and you evolved into being vegan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... What what triggered in you, in your consciousness, to say, yeah, that's that's the move that I, I feel move. that I should make? Yeah, like I said, it was a couple years off and on toward that end of the 17, yeah. where I would be vegan for a bit, but if we were out and right. something had, you know, right. then I'd be like, okay, it has a little dairy in it or something. There was no commitment. Right. But then uh, I had my daughter, and I was nursing her, and I started to make the connection of me nursing my baby mm. to the cows mm. being separated from their babies mm -hmm. and being milked for our consumption. Mm -hmm. And it broke my heart and it broke me down. Right then and there, yeah. I said to my husband, he pretty well, you know, he knew. Once it's personal, it's it on was, a whole yes, different level. it was over. And I took yeah. it very personal. Yeah. And as a woman, as a feminist, um, you know, being through those types of things in my own life of yeah. being taken advantage of, I just did not want to do that to another being. Yeah. So stopped right there. You, you talked about your husband and your family, and mm -hmm. so you guys began, began the uh, vegan district and yes. uh, the Long Beach Vegan Fest and mm -hmm. Vegan Sweets Con mm -hmm. and just <laughs> Vegan World, right? Yes. So we have this one minute piece mm -hmm. that we're going to share. Okay. And then I want to ask you a little bit about that, okay? Wonderful. All Wonderful. right.
that yes. looked very appealing. So, right, right. Yeah, so, so in essence, what, what were we just uh, so telling us about? So that was our vegan district. That was our okay. first one in March. And at the beginning of March, and it was outdoors, it's at the pike, it was in the rain, but you see people were still out, right. still enjoying themselves. It did not stop anyone right. um, from coming out, and you see all the foods and everything. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It looked like um, fun. Yeah, and delicious, <laughs> delicious yeah. too. Yeah. And um, that's what it was, and we're doing that every month. Well, I must say that I was introduced at a pop-up, as it was called, mm -hmm. Vegan uh, on, on Pine Avenue. Ooh. Went with a friend. At yes. a, at a, I had to wait an hour yeah. on a Sunday oh, morning okay. to get in. Okay. But when I bit into that sandwich, I was like, oh, you're no, like, Ooh, this is, this is it, vegan? Huh? Uh -huh. now, maybe I can move away from those baby back ribs. That's good. <laughs> Come over to Vegan District and I'll give you all the barbecue. Uh, all okay. the barbecue. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we will continue our conversation with Kawani Brown. Stay tuned for more of Long Beach Lands Talking Vegan. Is your footage shaky? Does your screen constantly flip? Recording with your phone is such a hassle, but not anymore, thanks to phone stabilizers. These devices keep your phone stable no matter what position it's in. This allows you to get the perfect shot every time. At PadNet, not only will you have access to these stabilizers, but you'll also learn how to use them efficiently. Intern Grace, uh, we're gonna go record some stuff for Padnet uh, for the Belmont Shore uh, Stroll and Saver, so stay tuned. Long Beach. I love 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 Long Beach. But I love Long Beach. 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 I love Long Beach because this is where I got my start and will continue to grow. It's wonderful diversity. It has awesome food festivals. Cause I like the beach. Because of the beaches and the food. It is a hub for all kinds of different artists of different platforms. The great family feel. The great food here. Of course, diversity, it's great neighborhoods, and it's opportunities for families. There's so much culture, art, and beauty in the city. Because I'm born and raised here, and there's no place I'd rather be. Back, I'm Derek J. Simpson, and we are here with Kawani Brown, founder and producer of the Vegan District at the Pike. And you and your husband just on a vegan roll. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's like all these events and opportunities, yeah. and you're really pushing uh, that to the forefront mm -hmm. of, of awareness. And I really love that mm -hmm. about your initiative and creativity and how you're making this happen. I, I heard on a um, I don't know if it was a commercial or just mm -hmm. in, in passing in social media, that if there's a group and there are at least one or two people that are vegan, they will drive <laughs> where everybody goes for dinner yeah. and everything else because you take that. And I thought about what they were saying. Mm -hmm. And even as an organization, we always have one particular staff person, Harmony, 
in mind that wherever we go, right. we always think about her. Yeah. Is, is, do they have vegan options? So yeah. do you find that to be the case now more and more? I do. Uh, it used to be you were kind of just left with whatever right. you were going to get. The you salad, didn't get to right? do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back in, you know, my vegetarian days and early yeah. vegan days. But now you can say, oh, we can go here, 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 and here. Yeah. And it sounds appealing to the rest of the group, too. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot more options. Mm -hmm. But, oh, man, what the times mm -hmm. are really changing. They are. They are for sure. Now, in the, before we went to break, we were showing the video about the vegan district. And mm -hmm. that's just... Um, and then I, I understand is Vegan Sweets Con. Mm -hmm. and, and is that a part of the same event or is that something different? It's and something tell us about different. That. Okay. okay, so Vegan District is monthly. Okay. It's every first Saturday of the month. It's free. It's outside at the Pike. Okay. And the idea there was we had Vegan Sweets Con, which is yearly, Long Beach Vegan Festival, which is yearly, but we wanted to give people somewhere that they could have throughout the year. Okay. And so they didn't have to wait for those events. Okay. And we wanted to be an accessible place so okay. that people who were even walking by may just be like, huh, yeah. vegan district, okay, let me go walk through, right. get some information, maybe try something right. um, so that it's kind of grabbing people, you know? There you go. And I always say with the festivals, you saw that video, all of the food, yeah. you get the people with the food. Yeah. And then once they try it, their mind starts to open and be okay. like, okay, maybe this vegan Paradigm thing is shift, not yeah. so bad. Right. And it's right. not just about the food, but once you get them there, mm -hmm. then you can start talking about all the other things that go into being a vegan. And do you have information there as well yes. to educate people? Yes, so we have people there who, great. you know, well, they can come up to the table, to the booth, and talk to them more. What kinds of foods can I eat? Where mm -hmm. do I shop? What do I do? Mm -hmm. um, what is veganism all about? Right. I had people, this was our our first one and people came up to me and they were like oh I didn't even come to this event I was just walking by and I yeah. thought I'd try something families yeah. individuals and that's exactly why vegan district is there and I would think the pike is an ideal place too because the convention center is booked it's uh, perfect. like 52 weeks almost of the yes. year with people from all over the country and the world and so here they come. you get an international market there and during breaks they yeah. come on down for lunch or come walking through there's also yeah. several hotels right there right so we got people from everywhere we've got the aquarium yeah. It's just so, um, it's the perfect spot because we're going to have some of everybody walking through there right. and coming there. When we have people coming yeah. there specifically for the event, yeah. but the beauty. Entertainment of, as well? Entertainment as well. We okay. have live music. Okay. Um, so at that one we had a DJ and each month there'll be someone different. And some now different before music. I forget, is there mm -hmm. like a social media or website or mm -hmm. something where people can get more information about this? Yes. All the social media is LB Vegan Fest. Okay. So that's going to be lbveganfest.com on Instagram, okay. Facebook, um, and that'll lead you to all the different events. Okay. If you get to one of them, you'll be able to click on the other events. Now speaking of events, we mm -hmm. have another video that we're going to share okay. and we can talk a little bit about it as as they uh, roll it for us, and that's about the Long Beach Vegan Festival. Yes. Now, tell us about that event and how that <sighs> all came about. That was our first breakout vegan event. Okay. We had events before then, but this was like, okay, we're doing it, we're going big. Taking it to the vegan next level. Vegan in the name, right. take it to the next level. Okay. And um, we were so pleased at the support and how many people came out for that. Um, it well, was that's a, a hot dog. That's yeah, a vegan hot dog? with some vegan mac and cheese on it. What? Yes. <laughs> so that's where it kind of also it started before then, but that was the big boom. You okay. know, that was when we. Now really this started. looks like it's down there at the Pike, but you're doing. I mean, at the. This was the, um, the shoreline at the lagoon. Park. The, mm -hmm. okay. Shoreline Park at the lagoon. Now, We've moved since then. Okay, now where is it now? Now we cannot announce where we are just yet, ah, but let okay. me tell you, okay. it's very beautiful location. And we'll Absolutely. be able to find it. Huh? Oh my goodness, okay. you're going to love it. Okay. And it's going to be open, so much space, because that's always been an issue. We okay. get tons of people at these things, right. and so now we've got plenty of space. Everybody can come if they want. Okay, and and when will this be? Can you give dates uh -huh. and times? This will be August 3rd for okay. the Long Beach So we've got Festival. some time for that. Yes, okay. we've got some time. We'll be mm -hmm. announcing very, very soon. Mm -hmm. um, and then Vegan Sweets Con comes December 14th this year. Okay, so yes. it's all lined up. It's and all lined up. Now, are you like one of the major organizers in this whole vegan initiative in Long Beach, or 
or mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk about the festival and the, the district and all, mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine, are there other competing events or complementary events? I won't say competing. Mm -hmm. Or is it pretty much what you're doing in addition to the local establishments? Yes, there's other events going on. You'll find pop-ups and things throughout the month. Okay. Um, there's always something, and not just our city. This is kind of going on in mm -hmm. L.A. and Orange County as mm -hmm. well. There's, if you want something vegan to go to, you're going to mm -hmm. be able to find them. And we don't see it as competition at all. Right, right. We see it as, you know, less, uh, the more, the merrier yeah. because we're spreading the word and it's abundance. So but how, how does Long Beach stack up? I mean, would you say that we have uh, a more robust vegan uh, we are. Uh, initiative here than other areas? Yeah? I hope and that's what we wanted to get okay. because before we were traveling to LA, we were traveling right. to OC, we were traveling to the Valley to get to these now events and restaurants. Here. Now they come here, and that's right. exactly what we wanted. Right. That's why we started it, because we wanted people to come here, which we live here. This is our yeah. home. And so we were like, we want something local, and now people are coming here. And, and that's are you beautiful. connecting with others, like the Convention and Visitors Bureau or others to help promote what you're doing? Mm -hmm. How do you get that? Actually, for the Vegan Sweets Con, we've moved mm -hmm. to a, a, another bigger location. We're trying to reach out to as much agencies as we can to get the word out. Okay. Um, and people are reaching out to us and saying, oh, we'd love to promote. Please come talk about it okay. um, as it's growing. And that's, de that's definitely what we want. Now, are vegan options more expensive? If somebody, again, mm -hmm. is trying to be introduced to this, would you say that it's basically is what you would pay for anything else that you would want to go out and eat? It can be, and mm -hmm. I'm incredibly mindful of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I grew up with a single mom who mm -hmm. counted pennies and things and made it work. Mm -hmm. I'm incredibly mindful, and we want it to be for everyone. Veganism, I always say, is for everyone. We have a nonprofit, mm -hmm. Plant Based for All, okay. and it, it pushes that initiative that vegan is for everyone. Um, we are able to feed our community, our homeless community, vegan meals, because mm -hmm. I really mean vegan is for everybody. Yeah. Um, and that's so important it, to us because we mm -hmm. serve low income as Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Yes. And so if we were to be promoting that with our constituents here, mm -hmm. uh, that would be something that you would say by It's all very means important. If right. you really want something to grow, you've got to look at everyone and is it, you know, accessible. Right. And so it can be expensive. That's not, you know, yeah. Um, I would never be, say, yeah, yeah like right. at these festivals, right, right. you're going to pay more. Number one, you're at a festival, yeah. and number two, it's not food you eat every day. It's like decadent, right, um, right. so it's going to be more. This is just your gateway in mm -hmm. and for you to try some different things. Mm -hmm. If you're going to some restaurants, it can be more, but mm -hmm. for an everyday vegan, I'm a bargain shopper. Gotcha. Um, I, you know, I have two children. And there are ways of being vegan and not breaking your bank, you know. Right. And that doesn't right. mean some people will say, well, you can eat beans, rice, and salad every day. Yeah. But again, nobody wants to do that. Right. But there are ways of doing it. Um, even now with the farmer's market, I've worked with people who are on public assistance. And even now mm -hmm. with the farmer's markets, you can take your WIC, you can take your uh, food mm -hmm. stamps and trade those in so that you can purchase at the farmer's market. And we're talking um, about a healthy, balanced diet mm -hmm. and being vegan. So there's mm -hmm. nothing that you lose other than... Oh, no, not yeah. at all. Okay. And these, Nutrition. you know, foods and things, mm -hmm. you have this sometimes and when you're out having fun, but for your everyday meals, right. that's what you want is healthy, balanced food. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that it's growing in mm -hmm. terms of Long Beach and in Southern California, I would imagine as well. Mm -hmm. But knowing what you know, being immersed in veganism as you are, what would you say is the future? What's the future looking like future. in terms of how it's in our schools or mm -hmm, how it's accessible mm -hmm. in our markets, uh, whether it be supermarkets, et cetera? Yes. What are some of the trends that you're starting to notice? Every day there's something new. Okay. We were just uh, in Vons this week. My husband was commenting, they now have child cheese, which is a you know newer brand of cheese. Like every day there's something new that makes it easier for you to be vegan. Oh. And that's great. And we see it growing. I'm mm. really, really excited about it. A few years back, I was not so positive. I was like, it's mm -hmm. kind of creaking by. It's moving slowly. Mm -hmm. We're doing the work, but I'm not seeing a huge change. Mm -hmm. It was very daunting, mm -hmm. but now it seems to be, you know, really picking up the pace. Like you said, we're in schools. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Every restaurant you go to, pretty much, if they don't have vegan options, they even more have a whole vegan menu. Yeah. Um, 
anything down to convenience stores. They no. have vegan items. It's not such a, a crazy word anymore. Before right. it used to be like vegan. Yeah, yeah. Even when I was vegetarian, people yeah. mentioned it to me. Do you think you'll ever be vegan? I was like, vegan? Oh my yeah. good. You know, it just yeah. sounded so out there. But now we're more familiar yeah. with it. And I just think that's yeah. great. I want to keep pushing it and mm -hmm. keep challenging people and grabbing people from, you know, all walks of life um, and introducing it to everybody. Well, I know that as I go to restaurants, I have a friend that's gluten free. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm very conscious of now uh, even noticing the, the GF. Uh, mm -hmm. icons and there. I start to see vegan icons more and more on and everything. yeah and everything so it is becoming more and more a part of uh, our everyday culture and everyday diets yeah, in terms of wonderful. for those of us who aren't as familiar mm -hmm. we're out of time but man you have so much exciting oh, news yes. going on Thank so will you, you so come much. back someday and keep us up to, up to date Most on what's definitely. happening and will you okay. come to vegan district hey now that I see those <laughs> Those burgers in our harmony is going to twist my arm if I don't go. Thank you so okay. much, Kwani. Thank I'd you. I'd like to thank uh, Kwani for Brown, Brown for joining us on today's show. What a pleasure she is. Uh, be sure to follow PatNet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. We also welcome your comments and thoughts regarding this show as we strive to make Long Beach Lens a favorite source of local news, information, and entertainment. This show has been brought to you with support from the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Thank you again for watching Long Beach Lands. <laughs>